Hey guys, Anthony 4 before diesel just a quick video here. See how red, focus on that red transmission oil that I'm draining. That's 80,000 kilometers in our 120 without any auto cooler. If you drive it right, you don't need a cooler. We've taken dirty oil out of a lot lower use kilometer vehicles than this with a 120 with a 5 cylinder or a 150. If you drive it right, you can expect to keep the oil nice and clean and red just like that. Now we're going to uh, refill it, no flushing needed. Hey, so I was going to just have that little video, 30, 40 seconds. You know what's going to happen? People are going, to, oh wow, that's good, that's nice and clean. But you know what, then there's going to be all these questions. So how do you do that? And da 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 da, and all these sort of, there's going to be other questions as well. So I decided we're going to speak a little bit about um, how to keep it clean like that, whether you need a cooler or not and why. What's better, auto or manual? Which manual, auto, which ones are good? Pros and cons of all the manuals and autos in these Prados and Hiluxes and stuff like that and some of the issues we've seen. Try and keep it brief. Um, so what will we start off with? Uh, we'll start off just quickly with some people have mentioned oil, which is why we're looking at the oil middle of the picture transfluid, ATFLV. Okay, so we've got a few different oils in the picture. Don't worry about the one on the left and the right. We're focusing on the ones in the middle of the picture. We've also got FS here because, okay, this is the thing. You've got to listen carefully. You miss the information. Like something we're going to have later in the video. I just had a text from someone asking about problems with manuals and the throwout bearing and stuff like that. And I'm like, mate, this is old news. We talked about this 10 years ago. That's why we don't talk about it anymore. So we're going to re-mention and remind everyone about some of the issues with those and how to avoid them, the manuals, the autos. So we're going to go through the whole thing. So be patient. So the LV is what we use now on the five-speed autos, okay? We don't use the LV on the four-speed autos, okay? Now, the four-speed auto listing, you know, it's just your standard sort of transmission fluid Dectron type thing, and we upgrade and use better oil. So that we've, for many years, we used the Penrite, the ATF-FS, right? So it's like this one here in the picture, except instead it's a different color, and it says FS instead of LV, right? Full synthetic, this is still full synthetic, you can see it says above it, full synthetic. It's virtually the same, you know. I've spoken to Penrod on this a number of times. So many years ago, this oil came out, this LV here, I think it came out probably about five years ago. I'm gonna take a guess, right? About that, you know. Might have been 2015 or 16. Before that, they didn't have it. There was FS. So when we spoke to Penrod, we said, so you don't have an oil for the Prados and the five suit autos and that? And they said, well, technically, so this is, the, it's all a bit technical, right? So, you know, if you wanna get your name on the, to fit this thing down here, you know, Mercon, uh, WS, Hyundai, this, Mitsubishi, that, GM, this, Ford, that, Honda, this, this, and that, and all that sort of stuff, you probably need to do certain things that cost money. You might even need to pay those companies off some money. I don't know. I don't know exactly how it works. Testing this and that. It's got to match exactly or be equal to or better and whatever, right? So if something slightly different, technically, maybe you can't use that you can't print it on there and say that's it you can you can say look it'll work it'll be fine we'll protect the transition there won't be an issue but you can't say it's that oil uh, if it's not sort of exactly that i guess is how to explain it but i don't really give a stuff about any of that so i could be wrong and who gives a stuff what matters is um we mentioned it i'm going to go off topic because i'm that i'm getting distracted by the ws there right so we mentioned another video so i'll mention it quickly if you buy the genuine ws oil from toyota you're probably just getting ripped off paying too much. You get it in four litre containers and it's hard to get into the transmission. You need a pump, a drum with a pump or something like this is your most efficient way to do it. Even here in the workshop or DIY, whatever the case may be. So we've kept one of these old drums. That's why it says WS on it. So if somebody brings oil, they think they've done the right thing, we just pour it into that container and pump it out. We've got obviously just move the pump from there to there, or we've got another pump depending. We'll just use this pump because like I said, it's the same oil anyway. This is the cheaper, easier option. So back to what I was saying, so I got distracted now, we got that sorted. That was a whole nother aspect of the video I was going to include, done. The FS is what we used for many years on the fire speeds, and I'm still happy to use it. It's a non-issue. We use it in our own vehicle that the transmission's done over 400,000 Ks, no issues. Now, this is the thing. They say they're sealed for life and they don't need any maintenance, don't touch it. It's kind of true because they're bloody strong awesome transmissions and even without any servicing i can tell you they're probably going to last forever and i'll give you some examples we do have vehicles come in here for the first time 
over 400,000 Ks and generally they're on the original transmission and it's working fine. So sealed for life, depends what you call a lifetime, but 20 years ago, 400,000 Ks in a vehicle was a pretty good lifetime. So easy enough to say, 20 years ago when they came out, well it wasn't 20, I mean the transmission probably came out then, the A750 we're talking about. Uh, certainly been in the Prado since 06, uh, was probably in other cars before that, so 15 years it's been, so close enough to 20. So when they did the planning and whenever it came out and they said sealed for life, well, mate, 20 year life, pretty good. It's probably going to last longer than that, but we know having new, fresh, clean oil, it's the lifeblood of the transmission and it's going to protect it better and it just makes us feel better. So when you saw that oil coming out of my transmission, I go, I just love that, I go, that's beautiful, that's what we want. We want it coming out like we don't come out brown and black and gray or anything there's no need for any of that so why would you do that so we use the fs because there wasn't lv available we were told that it's basically from a number of different tech people at Penrite said it's basically if you look at the you know whatever words they use, it's basically as good as the same oil there's a slight difference in viscosity now what we know in general about transmissions is if you use an oil that's too thin, it can cause problems. So you don't want an oil that's too thin. LV, low viscosity. That's going to be a little bit thinner than the FS, if you like. So by going to an FS, it's not too thin. I actually believe that the FS is smoother than the LV because I've used both. I okay, go, you know, FS, LV. I've got, you know, a few times I've changed it around, flushed it out and whatever. Um, in different vehicles, whatever, trying different things, whatever the case may be, in our cars. And from my experience, I could be wrong, it could be just me imagining things, I'll admit it, but I believe that FS is a tiny bit smoother. Now, there's nothing wrong with the LV, and the LV is the equivalent to the WS, so you don't buy the WS, you buy the LV, and you buy it when it's on special. As I've said, they have it in Australia here, at super cheap, Ripco, whatever you want to play, they're not super cheap, and they're not Ripco, you know, the Ripco and whatever, right? It's all fairly expensive when you think about the price per litre, someone's making some money, and um, what you, need to do is buy it when they have these massive specials you know when they say 40 percent off sit tight like stock up when that happens but sit tight until they do if you can it's not urgent now i had someone message me that was actually it was a comment on the youtube here um somebody said oh you know went out full driving whatever the case may be and they're probably listening now yep so oh, it might have been on the other channel we got another channel full before adventures one of the trips you know it was on one of those actually so wasn't on full before diesel it was on full before adventures and that, for those that don't know we've got two um facebook groups called the same as the youtube channels full before diesel and full before adventures so whichever one you're into or both you don't know, get into those as well you need to answer the three questions no swearing all that sort of stuff be nice we're all here to be nice to each other help each other out not cause trouble call each other names if it's not nice we're not interested right so if you're not nice don't bother coming because you'll probably be removed as soon as you do something that's not nice anyway um you know we're including a whole heap of info here and i'm getting distracted i'm going off topic so there's nothing wrong with the fs so some people say oh you know in the comments oh but you're using fs and you know da -da. fs is what you use for the full speed because that's what's listed for it remember what we said low viscosity right so it's a lower viscosity so if we use lv this is where it's funny though because it's this is how much all these oils are the same as each other and it can't be that technical but i'll give you an example right so the ford ranger Fords, they often have, they ask for Merc on V, Merc on V, Merc on 5, whatever. But if you cross reference that around, it comes back to a DEX3. DEX3, well, you can use FS because that's, you know, it's even better. It's an upgrade, right? FS, so you can use an FS, right? But then, so, if you, so that means you can use an LV because LV, hang on, how did this work? Um, so LV, uh, I've confused myself now. This is what I mean, it's so confusing. So let's get back on to... Forget about that. We'll come back to that if we've got time later. <laughs> but these oils, they're all that much the same. It's just not funny, right? So for your five-speed, this is my recommendation. For your five-speed autos and your six-speed autos, you're going to use the LV. So the A750F and the A60, whatever it is, right? The 750 and the 60 or whatever, right? You know all those numbers mean something? A is the manufacturer. Um, then it's how many speeds I think it is. So that's why it's called a like an a so the A340, whatever, the, that's a foot, the force for four speed. Threes for, I can't remember what it all is. Three, what was the other numbers? 757, was that the series or something? Seven series, ace. Anyway, those numbers, the three, 
and the five out of the 750 and the six out of the, that's how many speeds it is and all those numbers mean something but i can't remember what they are like everything else in this video the five speed and the six speed we're going to use that for the four speed we're going to use fs for the power steering systems we're going to use fs okay it keeps it really simple two oils you need in the workshop really lv and fs right now i reckon that if you mix and match either way i don't think you're going to have any problems at all but given the general information the general fact that thinner oils may cause problems with transmissions if the transmission asks for something that's a bit thicker like the fs or the dexron or whatever i'm going to stick with that i don't really want to go for the lv if it if there's a chance but i really don't think it's going to happen anyway so i wouldn't be too worried about it now how to keep it clean this is really easy right don't drive like schumacher right just drive nicely and and that's in so many ways that's not just taking off at the lights every time but don't take off at the lights hard if you can see the next lot red lights red or you can see there's a truck a bus there or whatever just take it easy the harder you accelerate the more revs you've got the wheels aren't turning that fast that means more slip Difference in speed between the engine and the wheels it was more slip in the torque converter under in most cases until you get to converter lock in the five speed gets converter lock in fifth and sixth the six speed gets converter lock in fourth fifth and sixth so once you're in the if you're in a six speed or one GD that slip their heads off unless you've got the latest software that may be improved we'll have more videos explaining that sooner or later once that one day we get this vehicle and we can drive it and test it and do some extensive testing and give you some proper feedback where we've compared to many other vehicles the same to know if it's really how much difference it is anyway so not slip the converter is the key so if you had a 1gd you gently accelerate off and once you get into fourth and you see converter off mate you're getting so you try and keep it locked if you just put it in drive all the time and you just drive what's going to happen is and this goes for the 120 and the 150 with the 1kd and the five speed and it even goes for the v6 the v6 has got the cooler there of course because it's got more revving petrol power uh, you know it can rev to six grand whatever the case may be so that's a whole heap of slipping and that's why they've got the cooler there because they know it's going to get hotter so those transmissions but the coolers work really well so they do work well to heap, help keep the oil clean so you don't need a cooler you can have a cooler if you like a cooler is certainly going to help keep it cool and help keep your oil cleaner and cooler <laughs> cooler and therefore cleaner right because it's the oil that protects the components in the transmission and once you cook it 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 doesn't protect the components as good but i've got to tell you it still protects it they're all they're made of gold they're just awesome material not gold actually but they are just probably some gold actually um but the, the materials they use the the engineers japan mate i'll tell you this these transmissions they're building they're just awesome because they've got this dirty old 400,000 k oil and the things still operate like new i feel sorry for them so our 120 it, as i said previously it got a flush at about 200,000 k's again it got a drop i was going to do a flush at 250 because my recommendation has always been don't touch it under warranty so when you get to about 100,000 or wherever your warranty ends because that's what warranties used to be that's where you do your first flush you don't take the pan off nothing wrong with the filter or anything like that you just flush the oil as in drop fill drop fill drop fill you can waste oil with a flushing machine if you like whatever it just uses more oil and doesn't do as good job we've explained in other videos we've got transmission flush videos check those out if you haven't seen it but basically 250 i was going to do a flush but it was clean so then i went okay we'll just put the three odd liters whatever it is back in it and so we did that and then at 320 i went well you know let, let's go let's do it. it's 70 now it's got to be dirty surely we only put three liters in it last time you know still like red cordial and this time over 400,000 k's and guess what yes even more it's getting cleaner as i drive it because we're still getting out that old oil from the first 200,000 k's from these two girls that were driving around Australia towing a caravan for 200,000 k's, mate. You know what I mean? Two, it had services in Broome, our 120, right? It had done many big trips, a lot of highway caves, hauling a caravan around with standard service and everything standard, caked up EJR, intake systems and whatever. It wasn't good. Original injectors, not good. You know what I mean? Readings when we got not good at 200,000 k's, right? Not the worst, but not good. No blow by, so that was good. Anyway. Over 400,000 Ks, oil staying clean. It's all about keeping the converter locked. So for me, I drive, I don't, you don't need to drive like that. Just get down, get to the speed, get it locked in fourth. But if you've just got it in drive and you're driving around in 60 to 70 zones, a couple of things are happening. You're putting more load on the engine. You're not getting as much airflow through the engine because the revs are too low. 
I mean, you know, you're putting around at 1,200, 1,500, 1,800 revs, you know. I mean, it's a diesel, but it likes two to two and a half thousand. Let's get a bit of airflow to keep it cool, right? And same thing when you're accelerating. So you're driving along in a 60, 70. People complain about the shutter then. The brrr, you know, you can get this shutter because it's locked in fifth and whatever. And you, get the, you can go on and get this bit of a shutter. Like, to me, it's just normal. That's what you're going to get when you've got an engine at such low revs, under load, and it's sort of staying locked because you're just lightly accelerating. But the first thing that happens is that torque converter unlocks, whether it's 60, 70, 80, and it'll be slipping away, making heat, and you won't even know. That's why you leave it in fourth, because then it's locked in fourth. You're gonna have to push the accelerator a lot harder to get it to unlock in fourth. It's gonna wanna lock. Otherwise, you're gonna be, next thing you know, traveling at speed. If, you, if you're in fourth and you're keeping the torque converter unlocked, you're accelerating quite a bit and your speed's gonna be increasing. So let's go straight to 100K. So 100K zone, this is where your problem's at, because as you get to 100 or so, the vehicles are like a brick, right? They are just like a brick. They're just flat on the front, they're big. They're not little flat cars, they're not sports cars. They're not even like your old Commodores and Falcons. They're twice the height. They're not as aerodynamic. They've got a big bull bar, roof rack, tires, whatever stuff you've slapped on there. Some big round spotlights on the front and it's like a brick to describe it best. So you've got a brick heading into that wind and it's only a four cylinder, right? So it's starting to work. So there's a bit of load there. The load's come out to around 50, 60. And the torque converter in fifth gear it will crack loose at about the load's usually in the six high 60s around 70 it depends on a few factors obviously but thereabouts and the torque so you could be cruising along at 100 k's cruise control 100 105 110 whatever speed zone you're in and you know we always talk about speed but we're always talking about we might say 115 but that might mean 110 because your speed is four or five k's out right you need to know about that so thereabouts right you're traveling at the 100 to 110 mark cruise control, you think you're doing the right thing, but every time you come to the slightest hill, depending which vehicle we're talking about here, a V6 or a 1KD, the V6s, because of the power pushing behind, it, they unlock a lot more easily, they slip more, they make more heat, transmission actually gets hotter, faster, but it's good we've got the cooler there and all that, because it works really well to keep it under control. Where the 1KD, it stays locked longer and better, the five-speed auto, with a 1KD actually works really well. And see, so now I'm getting distracted. I don't want to start talking about those manuals. But let's just finish off on the auto oil and the operation a bit more. And let's answer this one as well, because the person that went off road, they're doing it in high range. Oh, I'm testing the hill descent, whatever. No, as soon as you come to a hill or any soft surface, whatever, mate, low range, okay? So you're on soft sand on the beaches, low range. You're in the high country on any hills up or down, low range. It's all about speed control and having the grunt there when you need it's more about speed control low range you can put it in fourth and just put the second start button on because generally you want to get going in second anyway you don't want to get that sudden jolt into you at about two and a half three thousand revs because you took off in first unnecessarily first is only the only time i'll use that and this is going into the touring channel more talking about driving but uphills really rock calling on some really rough stuff where you know you've got traction, but you've only got traction if you do it slow, so you're not bouncing over the rocks, right? So if it's wet and muddy or loose, you need a bit more momentum, so you're in second, so you've got a smooth surface, that traction's not as good, you want to be at least in second or third low range, a bit of momentum. But if you've got one of those rough, I'm talking rough, rocky tracks, you know, really volcanic rock, whatever you want to call it, I don't care what rock, but, you know, but it's solid rock, you know what I mean? Like you're going up a rock wall, it's not loose shaley rocks, it's solid rock, but it's really rough stuff. You can't go flying over that. You're gonna bounce all over the joint. Your wheels are in the air. You're gonna spin. You're gonna damage your tire. You're gonna break your diff or something else. You're gonna break something. The car's gonna bounce sideways and then you're gonna roll the car and go down the hill. Dangerous. So you can't do that. So what you need to do, first you need to know what you're doing. The tracks I've got in mind when I explain this are pretty extreme and you really need to have some experience. You can't just go and hit it. This is where I'll be in first low range. I'm not gonna muck around. I'm gonna put the locker on straight away and I'm just going to pick the best line and I'm just going to crawl up it ever so slowly because I want all the tyres on the ground, or as many as possible, as much as possible. And on these angles of 30 degrees plus up this rock stuff, second is too slow. Again, you're just loading up the transmission and sort of it's, the engine's working hard because you're pointing to the sky, you know. That's where you, you know really slow and you want first. That's the only place I use first. I shouldn't say that because that's wrong. That's the only place I use it going uphill but then going downhill. So when you've got those really steep descents, it's all about keeping the vehicle under control. Now it's not lose it and then try and get it under control because then it's too late, okay? We're not doing driving lessons here, we're talking transmission, all right? So low range, first on those really steep hills, keep it under control. 
because if you don't do that, you haven't got much other hope on some of the tracks I'm talking about. You might not know what I'm talking about, depends if you've been around or not, but it doesn't really matter, you'll get there. Keep watching the videos on both channels, get yourself educated, right? The transmission's easy to keep the oil red, you'll never have to flush it again. You can drop it out every three years like I do and go, <laughs> look at that, it's still clean. And no, there's no transmission oil cooler there. I said it, if you want one, get the quality bracket, the quality kit from kon.com.au. I'm not saying you need one, I'm saying you don't need one. But if you don't care, you know, I couldn't be stuffed trying to worry about driving right, then get yourself a transmission cooler or don't, or get yourself a new car, whatever you want. The advice is for whoever wants to take it. Keep the torque converter locked. One of the biggest things is people, they're in a hurry racing around. Let's say we're out on a country road, it's a little bit windy. Mate, they're hard on the gas and then they're hard on the brakes and then back on the gas. Try and drive more smoothly. Pick a gear, stay in one gear, and think about your tyres and your brakes and the safety of you, your passengers and all the other cars on the road. And just go, oh, it's a bend, and just back off and let it slow down and cruise around the bend with no brakes. Or min you know, brakes is before the bend anyway, but you know, either no or minimal brakes. Um, and then just ease into it nicely because you just got the next bend coming. It doesn't mean you've got to drive slow like grandma, but there's a smooth way to do it, which is much nicer on the vehicle, and the including the trans everything, including the transmission oil. So that's the way you do it. Um, take note that coming downhill is low range and all that, it, it all slips the other way and it still makes heat in the torque converter. So don't get to the bottom of the hill and go, oh, why is my transmission so hot? That's why, because the weight of the vehicle is slipping everything in the opposite direction and it sort of gets hot as well. So. I've explained it best as I can there. Now, I'll, let's talk about those manuals as well. I highly recommend the autos over the manuals, and this is why now. Old school four-wheel driving, obviously, back back when I was in late teens and 20s and all that. Oh, I love manuals. Oh, I used to tell everyone, diesel manuals the only way to go. And it was back then. And you know what? You know, I'm an expert at stall starts and stall stops and all this sort of stuff. We used to do all that. Even mucking around in the uh, CFA, we had a Hilux, what was it called? A, a quick attack, fast attack, whatever. Anyway, a little 400 litre tank shoom, gets there quicker, right? For a small fire, get onto it quick. But we used to, that was obviously, uh, what was that? Uh, probably a 2.8 diesel or something, anyway. Um, manual, right? So, you know, stall starts, stall stops. You don't even need to worry about what that is anymore because there's that much technology in these cars. But I've got to say, I still like the diesel manual if for that really wet, steep, muddy. If I've got to do it, I prefer that over the technology. Now, that's probably because I haven't used the technology and I'm not going to take a $100,000 vehicle on a 35 degree wet slippery clay. I don't even want to do it anyway. It's scary. I don't know the things we used to do going up hills and then sliding backwards, you know, where, you know, max revs in. Anyway, just ridiculous some of the things that we did and those winch ropes, if they broke, mate, we'd be gone and all that sort of stuff. So not into that anymore. I'm into, it, let's do it the right way, make it drivable, do it when the conditions are right not damaging the tracks, not being dangerous to us or anyone else, much better way to do it. So the manuals, what are they good for? They are good for towing. If you do a lot of towing, because these issues that I'm talking about quite often with the transmissions, the autos, they do slip a lot and they're changing gears. You can't control it to push it up a gear. I, I, look, I, what I really like is, you know, the Ford, the FGs, the six speed, you can control the gear, you know, Triptronic, whatever you want to call it, mate. Off to the side, plus minus. The six speed is just awesome. Oh, bah, bah. And, you know, you just you can select what do you get. You, you can go up the Pentland Hills towing a boat in six gear if you want, you know what I mean? And with the turbo and the torque they've got, they do it really, what were they, 550 newton meters? They do it really well. And apparently, this little 2.8 diesel Prado's, what are they about? Aren't they about the same? 500 or 500? Pretty close anyway. So let's see. We'll get a tow bar on this one, GD, and put the boat or a caravan, and we'll take it up to Pentland Hills and see if it holds converter lock in sick like a genuine 550 newton meters did. Anyway, point is, the manual, you can select the gear, okay? So it can still get hot and all that. You do your oil changes every 40,000 on the manual either way. So it's going to cost you more in, you got to do those oil changes with the auto. Supposedly you don't, and you're certainly not going to do it that often but the auto oil costs more. The auto, it's not gonna let you down. They don't let you down, right? The 340s are good. The 750s are bloody awesome bulletproof. The 60s are probably just as good or better. Um, even though they're slipping and I'm not happy with how they operate, it just annoys me. Although the new one could be better. Um, I, I think that, you know, you just need to understand if you, the manual you can select the gear so you're going to get better fuel economy you can select the gear and it just holds the gear and holds the speed up the hill you you don't want to keep on it anyway you want to let it slow down a bit watch so you watch the coolant temperature 
because that reflects your EGTs, the whole engine heat, really. If you see your coolant temperature going 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, every five or 10 seconds, another degree, you are working it. You need to back it off. Normal operating temperature for the 1KD, 75 to 90. And the 1GD is probably similar anyway, but I am not haven't checked that one yet, but it's gonna be very much the same normal operating range. Now, plenty of people have said they've seen high 90s and over 100 and all that. I've never seen anything on my 1KD more than about 90, 91, 92, right? I've never, when I see 90, I just back off, mate. What, what are you doing? What for? You know, so that's the way to look after things. Watch your coolant temp, if possible. Keep it under 90. If you're going way over 90 and you can't control it, it's probably because you're towing. It's probably a really hot day and you're probably in the wrong gear. So these are this is the vid, sort of video you need to listen to and get what you can out of it to help look after the engine and the transmission if you want to look after it. If you don't give us stuff, it doesn't matter. So the manuals, the problem is they do have some holes in the bell housing and all the dirt and dust and mud and water and anything you like gets in there. And of course you've got that bearing thrust, bearing throat, bearing, whatever you want to call it, right? You've got the main bearing in there on the clutch fork or thereabouts, pushing on the diaphragm spring on the clutch to release the, you know, pressure plate to let the clutch this spin, right? You know, so we know it's all there. Everybody knows what I'm talking about, except for those who don't, they're going, whoa. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You can Google that and look up a diagram if you like what the clutch components, but you know, diagrams, they're not really getting explained to you best how they work. So I'll tell you what we'll do, right? Next time there's a clutch job in one of our workshop partners, we'll try and do a video explaining how the clutch works for the people that don't understand that. But look, because it's exposed and it's just one bearing and there's so much load on it. So one way to look after it, get your foot off the clutch. You've just got to remember, get your foot off the clutch. So they don't sit there resting your foot on the clutch at the lights. Whether it's in gear or not, get your foot off the clutch, okay? And make sure it's adjusted right so there's not pressure sitting on that bearing all the time because that's gonna wear the bearing, okay? But the issue you got is just a bearing, you know? Just think about it, dirt, dust, water, mud, anything that gets in and out of there, it causes problems. So it's a really common problem that they make a squeaking noise. It doesn't matter if it's a five speed or the six speed, whatever. Um, that's why I don't wanna get involved in them because you know, you can you get this problem, you gotta do the whole, you got it out, you must have changed the whole clutch. And then it can happen again, 10, 20,000, because it's not protected there. You've got these holes there. Anyway, and there can be some problems with transmissions as well. Now, depending on how much mud, dirt, and dust, what we call, you know, it's referred to generally as like the snout at the front of the manual gearbox. On the five speeds, there's, car, there's a cast iron section, which you can usually unbolt. There's a gasket, paper gasket behind there. From memory, you can unbolt that, change, you know, it or the gasket, but you don't need to because it's cast iron. So you just clean it up with some wet and dry, give it a nice polish up, do your clutch, put your kit in there, and happy days. What happens with a six speed? It's an all alloy box, and the front, that snout part, that's all part of the front of the box. You've got to pull the whole front of the box, you've got to strip the whole box to change this front bell housing with the snout, and it's just ridiculous design. So it's alloy, of course, that means it's soft and it wears easier or faster, which is not good, and it's a major repair to fix it. We've got a guy that sort of, uh, I think he's in WA, can't remember his name, I'll have to look him up if anyone's interested, you know, text me if you need this, and I'll try and hook you up with him, or, you know, something like that. You know, I haven't planned that far yet. See, I'm just keeps giving you the information. Another half an hour of information, can you believe it? Who's around still? This time, for the people that made it this far, um, 10 thumbs up so I know who made it this far. Um, so, it's, it's, I believe it's a stainless steel sleeve that goes over and then obviously an oversized bearing. He sourced all the right stuff. I'm not sure if this is just for the 120 or the, he was doing it for one or the other, but he was investigating and some of our other workshop partners were also doing some measurements to see if it's the same box or the same size because I can't remember. I only ever did a few clutches on these vehicles. Like I said, just enough for my own knowledge so I can share it with you and understand how everything works and what's different about these compared to other vehicles we worked on but it's not something I've got time to or want to get involved in because it's one of those things where you get headaches and comebacks and we only do stuff that's good, reliable, which is why I recommend the autos, okay? The autos are just gonna be reliable. They're not gonna let you down by surprise, usually. You know, you're gonna get one in a, it's probably one in a bloody 100,000, but anyway. Uh, very low odds that you can have any issues with the auto, especially if you're doing these auto flushes and driving it right and all these considerations if you've taken throughout this whole video. Um, the manual, the clutch is going to let you down at any time. Now, whether it's a Hilux or a Prado, generally if it's driven right, the average kilometres we see the clutch, genuine clutch lasts is about 230k, which is bloody awesome, okay? So there's nothing wrong with that either. If you look at that perspective compared to some other cars, like let's talk about Nissan Navara or anything like that, but you know, I've heard clutch problems at 20,000, 40,000, clutches worn out before 100,000, whatever. 
true or not, who knows? I haven't got enough examples to be able to say if it's true or not, but I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to own a Nissan Navara from what I've heard, right? Anyway, these Toyota clutches, they certainly last bloody ages. If anyone's had any trouble with a Toyota clutch under 100, 150, to, yeah, these sort of kilometers, they haven't looked after it right. They've had their foot on the clutch, or they've had to ride it a lot for, maybe they're reversing something somewhere and they're really riding it, cooking it, wearing it. While you're slipping it, it's wearing. It's like your brakes. When you're using them, they're wearing. Don't put your foot on the brake, they don't wear. Of course, you've got to stop. But if you think ahead, look at the lights ahead, look at what you're driving. Like I said, drive smoothly. You've got a road with a whole heap of roundabouts, just cruise at the right speed and, you know, through the roundabout just nicely. Minimal brakes, minimal gas, best economy, looking after the car, looking after the tyres, suspension components. Hope you get my drift, because it is a real drift, isn't it? Anyway, what else are we going to say? We've covered manual. So, look. I love manuals because you can just put it in that gear and lock it. What I would really love Toyota to do is make those the electronic control of the automatic transmission. If they could do that, and a transmission lock button, how good with an override, of course. You hit the brake or something like that, then it goes off. That'd be that'd be cool as well. Except you want it to stay on. So what you want is a cancel button, but you want a button that you can put on to not cancel. So that way, if you're off road and you're coming down a hill and you're in first or second, you just want to dab the brakes a little bit before you get drop off a little drop off. You can do that without it unlocking the torque converter, right? That'd be good. So what we need is, Toyota, are you listening? We need electronic control for the transmission. How about this? When it's in low range only, and you press a button, it disengages the brake cancelling torque converter lock, if you know what I mean. So you can, oh no, but you want torque converter lock in high range as well, right? Yeah, but that, that button, that only works in um, low range, it would be my design, because in high range, you don't need to use the brakes and the accelerator, right? So you're cruising along, towing your caravan, your boat, whatever it is, 110, and you want fifth gear, you got a six speed, and you just want fifth, because you can see it's sitting at 2200 revs, perfect, Ant said so, set the cruise control, 110, and whew, beautiful, how good would that be? Then all we need is autos, get rid of the manuals, right? Manuals, they are getting rid of the manuals, right? Manuals are a bit of old school, they're a headache, like we talk about with the clutches and stuff. Um, there can be some trip. There's more gearbox problems. There certainly is more gearbox problems than there is automatic transmission problems. Okay, clutches aside, forget about clutches. Just the manual transmission part and the automatic transmission part. Um, definitely, there is some issues in those boxes that happens in the five-speed, um, six-speed. Probably not as much, but that's got that complicated snout thing, whatever. Anyway, I've talked enough. I reckon it's time for me to get a drink. I hope that's helped you understand how to keep the transmission oil clean. So you don't cook it because it's clean oil is what protects the components in the transmission. So it is really important to do that. It's not hard to do that. It's just like retraining yourself. It's like retraining your, can you please brush your teeth at least twice a day or after each meal? Get into that habit, you know? Get every morning when you get out of bed, right? Warm yourself up, do your stretches and your warm up and do 20 push ups, 20 sit ups and 20 squats. There you go. There's my advice, do that. That's what I do. Well, not every morning, but you know, I try to, but you know, that's because I'm busy other activity, right? Keep strong. Hope, thanks for listening. What was it? 10 thumbs up. Catch you then. Subscribe. Turn the bell on. I hope this has helped you keep your transmission oil clean forever. And you can drop the plug like I do now. I'm going to 100. This plug is not coming out now until 500,000 kilometers. And there'll be another video on that. So subscribe. Turn the bell on so you don't miss it. If you don't want to listen to me talk for half an hour, you can just press next and not listen to the video. Or you can cut out after 5 or 10 minutes. But you might miss that important bit of info. What else were we going to include? So what oil? We did that. We talked about. We talked heaps about stuff. If I miss something, it'll be in the next video. No questions. Thanks for watching, guys. See you. There it is, guys. There's the 120 Prado. How can I show you how red that is? We need a. We need a white Ute in the background. There it is. I don't know. See the red color? There's no blackness there.